Welcome to this lecture series in group theory. In this lecture, we'll be talking about transpositions and let us recall a few things that we need. So we have discussed what is called the sign of a permutation. We saw it via a certain polynomial argument. We define these multivariable polynomials and uh, given such a polynomial and a permutation of the first 10 integers, we get another polynomial of this sort. And we saw that this is either plus or minus times the original one and whatever sign we get is the sign of the permutation sigma. Uh, we then saw that sign is a group homomorphism from Sn to this group. And we defined An as the set of all those permutations whose sign is equal to one. In other words, this is the kernel of this map. We commented that this is a proper subgroup of Sn, meaning sigma, uh, this, this sign function is surjective. And in this lecture, we will see that in detail. This is called the alternating group. Okay, so, these are some, these are some problems. Uh, these two are star marked, not because they are hard, but because I'm going to use them in this lecture. So just please take note of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let me comment. So this sigma is a k-cycle and tau is some other k-cycle, potentially the same. This exercise asks us to show that there is a permutation theta such that sigma can be expressed in this fashion. In other words, or there's a certain terminology that I want to introduce. This is called conjugation by theta. So what this exercise says verbally is that any two k cycles are conjugate in Sn. Meaning there is some theta by which if you conjugate tau, you get sigma. So that's what it says. And this is a sister exercise. Anyway, so let me continue. Okay, so let us define a transposition. A transposition is nothing but a two cycle, as simple as that. So that's the definition. So that's the definition of a transposition. Any two cycle in any SN is called a transposition. Let's see an example. So this particular thing, there's something wrong with notability. This particular thing is a transposition, of course, it is a two cycle. In general, more generally, this is a transposition. Uh, where i is not equal to j, obviously. Whenever we write this, we automatically mean i is not equal to j, but I'm just emphasizing it here. So these are all the transpositions, basically. Any transposition will look like this for some i not equal to j. And uh, here, is a, here is a simple example of how transpositions behave. We will look at it once more in this lecture, but for now, or at least uh, for this slide, let me just comment it here. So if you have a k-cycle, where of course we mean a1, a2, a3, and those are pairwise disjoint, and a k plus one is different from any of these, then this particular transposition, when producted with this cycle, gives another big cycle. So it's a cycle of one length greater. So just check this. Uh, lastly, suppose sigma and tau are two transpositions in Sn, then there is a, there is a theta, a permutation theta, such that Sigma is the conjugation of tau by theta. This is the conjugation of tau by theta. And to see this, just use the first star mark problem. Right, that is, this is immediate, uh, in fact, a special case of the first star mark problem. Okay. So this is uh, a lemma which we saw as an example earlier that every cycle can be written as the product of transpositions. This is actually this, this comment, but let me, let me do the details. So let sigma be this particular k cycle. If we can prove it for this cycle, we can do it for any k cycle. Okay. So basically what, what we want to show is, or what I want to show is that this guy, this guy is, equal to, so I want to show that, one up to k. So once we do this, we can just keep iterating the same thing over and over because this would then be also equal to that. So every time we are kind of shortening this one and introducing a new transposition. So this is basically the heart of the matter. And why is this? Well, we just need to see that the two permutations agree on every symbol. So start with one. One maps to two under this and two maps to two under this. 
So under this left side, uh, one maps to two, while on the right side also one maps to two, so that's fine. And similarly, you'll see two maps to three and so on. What about k minus one? k minus one maps to one and one maps to k. So therefore, k minus one maps to k under the left side. On the right side also, k minus one maps to k. So that's great. Lastly, what about k? k maps to one under the right hand side, k maps to k under this and k maps to one under that. So therefore, k maps to one under, under the left hand side also. So therefore, these two permutations are equal. And that's it. So this, this shows that every cycle can be written as the product of transpositions. We proved it for a specific cycle, but really the argument will be the, exactly the same, or you can use the conjugation property if you like, the first star mark problem. Anyway, so uh, this has a simple corollary, immediately, uh, or rather a generalization, uh, is that every permutation can be written as the product of transpositions. Why? Because every permutation can be written as the product of cycles. And now every cycle can be written as uh, the product of transpositions. So every permutation can be written as the product of transpositions, and that's nice. So now let us talk about sign of a transposition. So fix the transposition, and then we want to show that sine sigma is minus one, which also shows that the sine function is surjective, and hence an is properly contained in Sn. And uh, let me show this via an example, because formal details will only be confusing. So let's take n equals four and sigma equals one comma two, or rather one two, this particular transposition. So we have this polynomial p x one x two x three x four, which is equal to I will write it in a certain way. So this is x one minus x two times times x one minus x three x1 minus x4 multiplied by x2 minus x3 x2 minus x4 multiplied by x3 minus x4. So I choose to write it in this way for a certain reason that you will see. So what is p uh, x sigma 1, x sigma 2, x sigma 3, x sigma 4? Well, this is nothing but p x2, x1, x3, x4. So basically in place of x1, we will write x2 and in place of x2, we will write x1. So what happens to this guy? This guy just becomes x2 minus x1, which is minus x1 minus x2. So in place of that guy, we just get minus x1 minus x2. And if you switch x1 with x2 in this, in this place, and of course x3 and x4 will remain fixed, then this guy becomes that guy. And similarly, if in this in this play, in this uh, part you substitute x2 as x1, or rather write x1 in place of x2, you get the above one. So these two things just get switched under the you know application of sigma, so to say. So therefore, since you know they are commuting things, it doesn't matter in what order we write them. It doesn't really change that part. So that part remains un unchanged. And lastly, this part of course remains unchanged. Sigma is not doing anything to three and four. So that's, uh, that's why uh, the sign of sigma is minus one. We get a minus sign here. Now, if we had a more general transposition, then you could use the first star mark problem. And so then sigma would be theta times this particular transpo transposition times theta inverse. I'm, I'm saying theta is just some arbitrary transposition. By the first star mark problem, it is conjugate to this particular transposition. And now the sine of sigma is same as sine of that. Because sine, sine of theta into something into theta inverse is same as the sine of that something. And the sine of that something is minus one, we just saw. So that's a complete proof of this proposition. Okay, so every transposition has sine minus one. Great. Now this gives a characterization of a n. If sigma, so start with sigma in Sn, then sigma is an even permutation. This is the same as saying that sigma has sine one, if and only if sigma can be written as the product of an even number of transpositions, right? So if sigma can be written as the product of an even number of transpositions, then clearly the sine of sigma is one because sine of every transposition is minus one. And if you multiply minus one with itself an even number of times, you get one. 
So one direction is clear, meaning when sigma can be written as the product of an even number of transpositions, then sigma is an even permutation, meaning its sign is one. And conversely, suppose sigma is an even permutation, and suppose its sign is one, then write sigma as uh, the product of some transpositions. As we saw, every permutation can be written as a product of transpositions. Now the sign of sigma is obviously the sign of uh, the thing on the right hand side. But the sign of the thing on the right hand side is just minus one to the uh, power number of times number of transpositions that you see on the right hand side. So therefore, whatever this number is, let's call that number whatever k, this is equal to one. And hence k must be even. So if we have an even permutation and we write it as a product of transpositions, we will necessarily be writing it as the product of an even number of transpositions. You cannot write it as the product of an odd number of transpositions because of the sign invariance. So there is no point writing all of that down. This is clear. Great. And uh, this is a corollary of what we said. It's nothing, I mean, I have recorded it separately, but we have argued it. Basically, I'm saying that if you can write a permutation as the product of an even number of transpositions, then you cannot write the permutation as the product of an odd number of transpositions. Again, to repeat, the reason is simply that the sign of the product of an even number of transpositions is one, while the sign of the product of an odd number of transpositions is minus one. And uh, if those two things were equal, we would get one equals minus one, which is wrong. So we have that. And uh, yeah, I want to finish. That's it. That's all that I wanted to discuss. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I also have Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. Thank you.